Hello, everybody. We are going to be talking a little bit about some of the tools that we use. Oh, look at this. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's a robot right here. It's in my way, but we can take care of that. Okay. Anyway, we're going to be talking about the tools that we use. And obviously, uh, what we're working with here is uh, pencils. And pencils are basically the first tools that we pick up when we start learning to draw with. Uh, we learn, you know, from uh, way before kindergarten, way before first grade, we start picking up pencils and drawing little shapes and, uh, and they, you know, we create all sorts of different things. Creativity is really, well, that's what's, here it is. It's where creativity shines, like it says on the logo up here. But uh, learning to use our tools and make them do what we want them to do is really important. It's an important part about uh, learning to draw. And so whether you're learning shapes or shades, uh, whatever you want to do, the tools are important. So we're going to talk a little bit about those tools. So let me put my little robot arm right up here again. And uh, so this is your basic pencil. Last week, you guys, if or last time that I did a little video demonstration, well, I actually used a Bic pencil, a number 2.9. Uh, I don't use the really fine lines because if I want a fine line, all I have to do is just very lightly draw with it. And uh, even a 0.9 Bic mechanical pencil has an edge. You can create those fine lines if you want to. And uh, you know, it really can't zoom up quite enough, but it actually has a flattened edge after you've used it for a while. Use it on one side and then turn it and then you can get that really fine line if you want to. So it does everything I need it to do. Plus, it allows for some shading. And this is a number two, which is the same as an HB pencil. Now, most of your pencils will have some little numbers on them. Uh, the number two pencil is the same as an HB, but most artists use the H and B uh, nomenclature. And let's see if I can get that focused again. And this one is an 8B. B are the soft ones, okay? So all the Bs are black. The, the higher the B, the blacker the mark that it's going to make. And so you can make some really dark marks using that. HB, well, here's a 4B, okay? So that one's not nearly as dark. Not nearly as soft. Although if I press down hard enough, you still get a really dark mark. So all the B's are going to be fairly soft. Now we're going into a 2B. Now you notice that the marks that this makes a little bit narrower than the 8B where it was. See how wide that broad that stroke is on that 8B, that's because it's so soft it flattens out almost immediately upon shading with it. A 6B and a 4B, I really don't even have anything in the H variety with me. So I kind of undersold that one, I guess. Now, some of the things that you can use, this one's a 3B, and this one's a pencil holder. When your pencils get down to a certain point, it's nice to have something like this so you can create, so you can extend that barrel on it. So, and again, with the 3B, it's gonna give you a nice dark line, nice dark shade. Uh, most of the stuff I'm gonna demonstrate today, we're gonna use a soft pencil for anyway. So, and uh, the uh, hardest pencil I have will be my HB. Now, let me, Go back over. Is it an 8B or an H? H. Well, this one is an 8B. So I've got... We have both. That's 8B. That one was a 4B. And that one is a 2B. Or not 2B. I don't know. And so we go over here. And this one, which is my mechanical pencil... is my HB. HB is the middle of the road. So we go up here and 
don't know if there's a 10B. It seems like there is, but uh, these are so dark and so soft that you shouldn't have any problem uh, getting the dark shades you need from them. And you can blend the color, you can blend the shades together, of course, make them go from light to dark. Now, one thing, if you're shading with a soft pencil and you're going from dark to light, so in other words, you're taking the, uh, you're going to start here dark, and then you're going to lessen the pressure that you're pushing down with. As you do that, your dark pencils will give you more of the texture of the paper. So if you want a lot of the texture of the paper showing through, use a darker pencil. Oh, I wanted to make one other point here. The B stands for black. That's how dark the pencil is. H stands for how hard the pencil is. And every pencil is made up of two compositions. Uh, one is a I believe it's carbon and the other is uh, clay is that right carbon clay no. okay <laughs> anyway clay is very hard and it's a specific type of clay uh, this is basically what graphite is so and graphite as I understand it is mined in specific locations comes already uh, basically mixed, but you can add more clay to it, more carbon to it to alter the the, uh, the B levels on it. So anyway, so you've got 8B going over here to HB. And then on the other side, you've got 8H, uh, 6H, 4, 3, 2, and then you have H. Okay, and then it goes into your HB. You also have a, a number or a letter F sometimes on a pencil. And as I understand it, I think that's somewhere around, somewhere in between the H and the HB. So it's just a little bit harder than the HB. It uh, gives you a finer, um, although, all right. Let's put that F right in there somewhere. It's about the same as a number four pencil. H is a number three pencil. HB is a number two pencil. And a 2B or a B is going to be the same as a number one pencil. Now, whether they still produce these numbers anymore, I, I'm not sure. Uh, but we used to get, I know back in the day, we used to get these really fat pencils and they were basically grade school pencils. And those were number one pencils. They were much darker and uh, with a fatter lead. And they were really good for kids. They're about this big around. They were really good for uh, kids who are just learning to print and do their alphabets because they made a big mark. And they were usually round. Anyway, uh, you older types will know what I'm talking about. These young, young, uh, younger people around me right here probably go, what the heck are you talking about? But anyway, <laughs> so these pencils, uh, it's just a little bit uh, of information on those. Now, what can I do with a pencil that's really soft? Well, let's find out. First of all, there are only certain ways you can use a pencil, okay? Uh, a lot of people want to hold it here because they tell us to. this is how you learn to write. And we're using our thumb and our finger and we're manipulating the whole thing like that. A lot of, well, most artists I know like to start out and keep their pencils and hold their pencils either like this or in some variation of it to where they're actually using their whole arm to draw with. So this would be more of a... Oops. <laughs> now, the thing about this drawing position 
is that it lets you or it forces you to use your whole arm so you're working over larger areas and when you work small like on this little tablet that i've got here you're not going to need that quite so much so i'm going to make a little adjustment here there okay writing position drawing position so when you start sketching things out start drawing mountains putting trees works really well if you're working in gesture form So uh, anyway, and that's good for working really lightly. Now, the nice thing about this, like I said, if you're using this style, this writing position, as you put lines down, you tend to push down pretty hard because we were told press down hard when we were young so that you can see the line you're doing. But when it comes to art, you're actually trying to create or build up things. So think of it as building up like clay in a sculpture. You want to build things up slowly and lightly and work towards that darkest end as you go. You don't want to start it out really dark because quite often when you start it out really dark, you find you have to erase. And then you find that you can't erase, especially with these darker pencils. Now the places where I use the drawing position those will go away entirely. So you won't need, you won't be able to see any of that. But wherever I press down hard on these dark pencils, it shows up. Now, even if I take this and shade over the top of that, if I get that erased as much as possible, it's actually pressed into the soft paper such that when I start going over the top of it, I start getting ridges. Now, I'm really not sure if you're going to be able to see this. Where I'm going to. We'll try and zoom in a little bit. And yeah, see that? You can see the letter B that I put in there. I pressed down so hard on that that it's now really, you see a little white uh, outline here where the B was. We'll go over this mountain edge here, this little ridge. And even that, I pressed down so hard in it that you can see that white ridge of the paper. So you have to be careful about pressing down too hard. That's why we like to start with our hands in a drawing position, because in that drawing position, we can work really lightly, figure out everything, get all the uh, proportions and all the placement of the objects for our picture. And once we've got those in position, then we can go ahead and and start uh, creating from that. We can go ahead and darken after that. And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to play around a little bit. Okay. I'm going to start with a 6B. And we're going to keep it. We're going to get a little bit sharper. And then we're going to introduce a few other tools into it. That's a nice little sharp edge there. Okay. Now, first thing I want to do is I'm going to give myself a toned ground to start with. I'm going to take this soft pencil and I'm going to go across it, across my paper, just back and forth. Now you can see the streaks in there. I'm going to lighten it up as I come down a little bit, though. And now I'm going to introduce another tool. Now I don't need to blow my nose. I'm just going to go ahead and do a little, little uh, smudging. So what I want to do, these soft pencils smudge so easily. But now I can really smooth that out. 
So smudging is another technique that we use a lot with pencils. I see it in beginner artists overused quite a bit. So sometimes I wonder why I even show the technique, but it really is a nice technique for getting smooth edges. The only thing is you don't want to leave it blended like this. You want to make sure and go back in and define edges because every time you blend like this, every time you rub or do smudging, you lose an edge. But right now I don't have any edges. All I have is a background. And from that background, I'm actually going to take my eraser and I'm going to take this. This is going to be a really simple little landscape drawing. I'll start right here in the center. Just start coming out from the center with lines coming straight out. Okay. My famous Mui eraser. Love this Mui eraser. Good stuff. Kind of an eraser does a cow use? Well, you know the answer to that. Okay, so go with that. All right, so now we've got kind of a sunburst here, and we're going to take that soft pencil again, another one. Uh, let's go ahead and keep doing the 6B, and I'm going to take this, and I'm just going to go put some little smudges across it like that. Let's throw another smudge across here like that. Another one here. And then a bigger one up towards the top. Okay, and we can have a couple little ones here. Now, the closer we get to the bottom, this is the sky. The closer we get to the bottom, the further the objects are away from us. And therefore, I have to make those objects smaller as they get closer to the horizon line. So now I'm going to take my paper towel again. I usually like to fold it over. And then I hold it with the uh, thumb and middle finger, wrap my forefinger, and then tuck everything underneath. And then I'm going to go just inside that little bit there. And that's going to create a cloud for me. A little deep sunsetty type cloud. And then just come across there. Do some more. I'm staying pretty much within the lines, but I'm letting it smudge out so it looks very atmospheric. Now, down here, I don't want to... I've got so much... Yeah, I can yeah, draw with that, which I will later on, maybe. But to get this down here, though, I don't want that much graphite on, so I'm going to take it and get a clean piece. We'll run it across here just to get those clouds in there. Okay, so now, if you've ever noticed sunset, you'll always see a little bit of silver lining, only it'll be on the bottom of the clouds because that sun is farther away. So I can take a fine eraser like this and create just a little bit of a shine on the bottom of the clouds, like that. So it looks like they're catching that last little bit of sunlight going underneath the horizon going beyond the horizon and those clouds are catching a little bit of that might even have just a few little wispy clouds here down close to the bottom okay and then I should have brought a brush but I can use my paper towel another tool to gently waft away all those little uh, shades or the uh, eraser shavings so now, let's go in here. We've got a sky. One more thing, too. Sometimes these light rays that are coming through here actually will be in front of the clouds, too. So I'm going to throw a few of those light rays coming through the clouds. And one thing, you have a natural stroke of the arm. And so it's a good idea sometimes to turn your page so that you get that natural straight stroke of the arm going the direction you need it to go. You can't draw with, no, I can't anyway, with my paper in only one position. I want to be ready to turn that around and move it around. 
Okay, so there I've got a pretty decent little sky there. Uh, let's see, zoom in a little bit on there. And so you can see what's going on there. Now, to add even more, we're going to take our 6B, and I'm going to put some distant mountains here. Now, quite often, like way too often, we get somebody that says, okay, I remember mountains because I learned how to draw mountains by watching Rocky and Bullwinkle. Okay, well, that's, you know, okay for Rocky and Bullwinkle, nice cartoon mountains with snow caps, snowy peaks. But we, uh, mountains generally are not that steep. They tend to break apart, fall down, and, uh, you know, so basically they're fairly flat. Now you'll get some occasionally that'll have a really steep edge. For example, the Tetons have some really steep cliffs, but we just want to get a little bit of a rock a range here. And we can add another set of mountains really close to it without getting too deep into it. So we have some layers. So one layer after another. And what I'm going to do here now is we're going to take the same idea of going from dark and we're going to do a transition going really dark and we're going to get it lighter, just a little bit lighter as it comes down. Okay. So starting it really dark, lightening it up as it comes down. So right at the top of that dark coming down. Now we're going to start again with this next row, dark, and then we're going to let it lighten up as it comes down. So this is a gradation, and you see gradations a lot at sunset. You see a lot of them when there's fog or some sort of uh, uh, atmospheric uh, moisture. What am we calling that? Humidity. A lot of humidity. You'll see this. Smoke will also give you this feeling. If you come to Idaho in August, you'll probably see those smoky areas, and you'll see that where it, the tops of the mountains are a little bit clearer, and then it just fades into that fog. The mists of an evening or of a morning will fill the valleys. Be dark at the top, coming down. And this is what we look for there. So again, we've got another ridge here. We'll get that ridge, start at dark, bring it down. Now I'm going to introduce you to another tool here. A tortillon or a smudge tool. So now I've almost used all of my lead down here. It's about time to sharpen it up. Otherwise my wood that's starting to catch here is going to make little incised lines. So I have to sharpen my pencil so I'm not letting that wood make any marks on my paper because that'll mess up my shading later on. So come down just a little bit more with that. Now, they have these cool little things called a paper smudge tool or a tortillon or, I don't know, you've heard some other names for them? Uh, I don't know. There's, there's quite a few, but I can't think of any of them right now. But those two will work. Smudge tool. Yeah. So I'm going to take this and push this in. What it does is it actually pushes the soft pencil into the gaps in the paper. So that gives me a nice, dark, smooth tone. Smoother than it had been before. Now, if you don't want to go out and spend a dollar, they're usually at like a package of three for a dollar or something like that. They're, they're pretty cheap. Maybe two dollars for three. I don't know. Check Hobby Lobby's prices with COVID. They're probably going up. But uh, anyway, or Michael's or wherever. Heck, you can buy these at Fred Meyer's even. And Walmart. 
but don't go there in the afternoon. It's crazy. So, <laughs> okay. But if you don't want to purchase one of these, you can take that, if you can find wallpaper or uh, paper towel, you can take paper towel and simply fold it up and then take this and curl it into a point. And then you've got your own little paper smudge, mm -hmm. just a little mm -hmm. paper wedge. And you can use it the same as you would your tortillon. So that's just a cheap and easy tool you can make yourself. So now we've got a little bit of a mountain range. I'm going to take my paper towel, unfold it again, come back out here, and I'm going to pull this down just a little bit lower. Grab some of that smudging. Now you notice that even with the smudging I was doing, I kept it really crisp up here along the top edges. So I didn't really smudge over those edges. I, I don't want them to fade off or anything. Missed an edge. Let's go back in. And if it's a little bit sharp in here, I kind of like it. But if I didn't like it, I could just take this and rub over it just lightly. So I'm not pushing down hard at all. But that's all it takes is to get that in there. Now, right here, a little sunburst area. I'm going to have that kind of encroach on the horizon line. So that sun is actually smoothing it out. And we're going to take our sharp pencil here. And now we're going to actually bring this like so, just to create the feeling that that sunburst or the, the sun, the end of the day, the light is shining clear past there, even the light rays. So it's lightening that up. So it looks like there's just a little bit of sun passing through that last little valley there. You can see where it's going. Now, we have to do a little more because guess what? I didn't didn't plan this out. Look at all this empty space I got down. Oh, well, no, I lied. I planned that. We left this on purpose here. So I'm going to take this now and we're going to put a little hillside here. And then we're going to put just a little, little edge here. And we're going to do a lake. Now, just like before, when I was talking about drawing mountains, Everybody knows lakes look like this, right? They're off their odd shapes and everything. But because we are looking at them and the lake is so close to the horizon line, it flattens it out. It's just like when you have a cylinder. In a cylinder, if you're looking at the top of a cylinder, it looks very round. You're looking down. So that's what it looks like if you're looking inside a cylinder, right? Very rounded. But as you bring that out and start looking, as it gets closer to the horizon line, this becomes more of an ellipse. And more of an ellipse to where it almost becomes flattened out. Now, let's think of our lake. If our lake is in this shape, when it's like this, when we're looking at it from a helicopter up above, then we take that and we squish it down, and suddenly it becomes less of, a, less of an amorphous, amorphous shape and more of an ellipse, and then it becomes even more of an ellipse as it comes down to here. So when we draw our lake on our landscape, it's actually really close to the horizon here. So we're just going to take that lake. We could actually take in one little corner. Maybe there's a little bit of a, an island or something. 
or a peninsula there sticking out into it. And we might have another one over there. And that's going to be the edge, the far edge of our lake. We'll go ahead and put the near edge of our lake down here. And then over here on our hill, this is going to be a hill, by the way. We're going to sprout a tree right there. That's kind of a thick tree. Now, what am I going to do with all this dark stuff in here? Well, we'll figure that out in a minute. Now, a tree is a cylinder, so keep in mind that as it comes down here, it won't be straight across there. It'll actually be rounded, and even if the roots come out, it'll be rounded like that, right? Okay, so like a cylinder, it'll have a roundness to it. And we're going to put a rock here in just a minute. But let's go back here. I want to talk about this tree, or I mean this tree. <laughs> Since we got one tree, we have to have more trees, right? Can't just have one tree in a landscape. So over here, we're going to put a bunch of trees. We'll grow them up. What? That looks like grass blades. What are you talking about? Okay. Different sizes of trees. Like this one's long. In the, re in the reflection of the water, we're going to have a long one there. Short one, short one, short one, short one. And kind of an angled one there. Okay, longer one here, longer one here, shorter, shorter, longer, longer. I don't know what that is, bush maybe. Okay, and then a couple of others. Now, to do a tree, we're going to keep it really simple. Not quite that simple. Instead, we're going to take it, and we want a little bit more uneven. So we're going to take this tree, and we're going to do... Starting with the trunk. I don't like that one, but we'll work with it anyway. I'm just going to work down with the branches coming down in a jagged manner, getting thicker and fuller towards the bottom. And you see how easy and fast that is to create trees? Now, I can actually vary my pressure and use some of them a little bit darker, some of them a little bit lighter. And just by going back and forth, I've got one, two, three, four, oops, five, six, seven trees right there. Okay, in just a few minutes, maybe under a minute. I don't know. Are we timing this? Okay, <laughs> let's get the clock out here. Okay. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're just going to put a little jagged back and forth to give it the feeling of an uneven, because they really don't grow. They really don't grow. I mean, we look for that perfect Christmas tree in December or November or sometimes October, and we're trying to find that perfect Christmas tree. But, you know, nature usually doesn't grow things too perfectly symmetrical. There's usually some little flaw or some little bias on one side or another. So we're just going to go up like that. Now, these trees are upside down because they're reflections. And so we're going to start thin and get thicker as we get closer to the edge of the water. We're going to Bob Ross it up here in a second. So, so keep keep uh, keep watching. All right, got those trees coming up. Okay, so cool. We got that, and we've got these trees up here. And remember how I said that if you use the side, you get kind of a texture of the paper going. Okay, that's what I'm going to be looking for right now. I want to get the texture of the paper working for me. And I just want to have a little bit of a rough texture in here. So it may be as rocks or pebbles or grass or something. But I want a little texture there. I don't want it smooth. Now, in here, my water 
Remember how our sky starts out light and then gets darker as it goes up? Our water reflects that and is the inverted version of that. So it'll start out light at the bottom and it'll get darker as it gets closer to the edge, closer towards us, because it's reflecting the sky. Oops, forgot that bank. And I got to get that bank too. Let's get all the banks here. I have a day of good banking here. All right. So now I've got this coming down, but I want my water to look smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and see if I can still find a clean corner of mine. Just very, very lightly, because this is a soft pencil. Very, very lightly go over and create a little bit of a smoothness there. Now, these nice little side streaks in here have the feeling of being ripples in the water. Because when you see that, the water's flat. The ripples generally look flat across there. You won't see any up and down ripples. Reflections, yeah, you'll see reflections up and down, vertical reflections. But rippling will almost always be horizontal. So now I'm going to take my eraser and I'm going to throw a few more ripples in there. Just a little bit, kind of smear some of those the wind is rippling through the, the reflections of the trees. And now just a simple little landscape there. And there's my water. Okay, got that going in there. I'm going to take this 6B again. Uh, maybe, maybe we'll mix it up here a little bit. There we go. We'll take the 4B and play with that for a second. Again, I want to have it nice and sharp so I have the full length of that to work with. And move it up here a little bit. That one will just bring it up straight to there. Okay. There we go. And the zoom. Okay. Now, maybe I like that's even a little bit out of the way. Okay. Right in this area here, it's kind of empty. I want to just give myself a feeling of some brush. So I'm going to do kind of like I did with the, the uh, clouds. I'm going to just kind of some back and forth stuff to create some brush or some bushy looks to it. Uh, if I want to, I can actually pop it up and create some trees. So it looks like a stand of trees back there in the distance. I'm not even thinking about the time. How am I doing for time? Are we, yeah, I guess I guess we go till we're done. Yep. That's <laughs> okay. fine. However long you want. Okay, so we can create more trees here. All sorts of different things that we can do with it there. So, and maybe we'll have some brush coming up right along that edge of that ridge right up to it and we can actually take the side of the pencil and just kind of some back and forth up and down marks to make it look like there's maybe some willows growing along at the edge of the lake there a few reflections there oh yeah you can use your finger for smudging too two things your finger, it has oils in it, and that's fine too. That you know, but your finger is going to press. It's not going to pick up the. Uh, it's not going to pick up the graphite like the paper towel will. So when you press with your finger, you're actually going to be pushing it into, and you'll be making it darker. The paper towel actually kind of lifts some of the, uh, a lot of it, lifts a lot of the graphite off of it, and therefore sometimes paper towel smudging. And actually make something a little bit lighter. So there's a little bit of a difference between smudging with your finger and smudging with paper towel. Okay. 
turn that off there. Now, we're going to come over here and, oh, tree first? Yeah, tree first. We'll go with our tree. Okay. First of all, I've got a tree here, and there is going to be some rim lighting right on the edge of the tree. That rim lighting is the last little rays of sunset hitting the edge of the tree. So let's hope that my eraser can pull some of that light out of there. Oh, look at that. All right. We're doing good. Okay, so there's the edge of our tree. But now we have to put the back edge of the tree. So with that, I'm going to do what we call an accent line. An accent line generally is a line that varies from dark to light. It'll have accents in it. And it can go dark to light, dark to light, dark to light, like that. It's really useful for a lot of different things. What we're going to use it for right now is to create tree bark. Okay, and I'm going to go in there, create those lines, leaving little gaps in there. Some will be thin, thick, right along the edge. Now, I'm not getting these light areas down here, so I'm going to take my eraser and pull some of those light areas out so that my accent lines show up better. Okay, and I just keep bringing my tree up and I can continue that highlight area, that rim lighting all the way up. And now I can start bringing some branches down. And I'm just gonna make them dark because it's, yeah, it's sunset, it's evening. And now I'm going to start, I'll show you again on another sheet of paper here. I'm going to start doing some little asterisks like that. Just start weaving back and forth. It's kind of like when we did stars, except that we're making them all go through the center axis. And if I do enough of those, we're creating the illusion of pine needles. I suppose we probably should do a like a tool list or something what you need for this since we're talking about tools. But basically our paper towel, a dark pencil, a soft pencil. Definitely a good Pencil sharpener. Nice and sharp. Most of the plastic ones I've noticed aren't very sharp. They kind of just break things off. So don't, don't get a cheap one. Get a good metal pencil sharpener. What about an electric pencil sharpener? I love electric pencil sharpeners. I've got a battery-powered electric pencil sharpener that's a uh, an Exacto, I think it is. It's a brand. And it works great. Only thing is I didn't bring it. And the only one here we have is, uh, we have the same one here, but it's got a wall. Uh, it has to be plugged into a wall to work. So anyway, oh, let's get back on the page here. So, kind of a moody little sunset here. It's all really dark, uh, courtesy of our dark pencils, of course. I don't want it to look too even, so I need to fill in some of the dark areas there in between. I can have occasional branches come down. Okay, so that's our that's our lone pine tree there. Now he looks, yeah, 
looks kind of lonesome down here, so let's give him a friend. We're going to do a, a rock. You ever drawn a box? Yeah, here we go. Uh, boxes. Basically, you draw a box like this. You know, three lines here, three lines here, three lines here, all parallel. Okay, and you can do it this way too. You can make a diamond and one, two, so one, two, three lines, one, two, three lines, and one, two, three. Is that right? Yeah, one, two, three. There we go. Basically, three sets of three parallel lines each can create a box for you. Now, this is a really rough looking box. But, you know, when I would give this assignment to draw boxes to my students, a lot of times the boxes would come out something like this. They would start with that diamond shape on top, and they'd get it kind of wonky there, and then they just kind of come out like that. And I got to realizing they didn't draw a box, they drew rocks. That's a great way to draw rocks. Rocks are basically planar, which means they have flat planes. And so you can take those planes, you can break them up and add more planes to them to create more flat planes. You can add cracks into them and all those. So basically, I call these box rocks. Okay, you start working on these edges and add more planes to them. And instead of having the planes going, the sides going straight down, they just kind of go down at angles. And suddenly you've got a whole bunch of rocks. You can just keep building on those rocks like that. So box rocks are pretty cool. When you have uh, all these different planes, one plane, just like our box, is going to be, let's see, there we go. One plane is going to have a little bit of light on it, or a lot of light on it. Another one's going to have less light on it. We'll do this one. And then the last plane is going to be darker. So you're going to have three different shades when you're talking about a box, okay, which is great. But when you start talking about these rocks, the planes aren't quite as pronounced. Like these are 90 degree angles away from each other, these planes are on our box. Well, with our rocks, you're going to have still the dark side. You're going to have a light side. And then you're going to have a medium side. And that's going to be true of every one of these different planes on these rocks. So we're going to go in now. And we're going to throw some rocks in there or some bad boxes, whichever. So we're going to start here with just the top of the rock. And then I'm going to take some sides and come down on one side, come down on another side. And now I can put another rock over here beside it, come down. I can put another rock over here, just a tiny one. I can put more over here if I want to, but I have other ideas for that. Uh, one of the things I don't want to do is I don't want to put something right here in the corner that's going to bring our eye away from our design. I want things, you'll notice even here, let me zoom out a little bit. Even here with the tree, it tends to slope downward. Okay, that's to bring us down into the lake. And then the lake will come over here, and these trees here will actually pull us up here a little higher. So they pull us from the lake up back up into the sunset. The sunset has the clouds, which bring us down and over to the tree and then back down into it. So we have a little circular motion going here. So a little compositional elements that work together. So now I want to add some more. So right now, let's finish your rocks up here. First of all, we want it light on the top and pretty dark on the side. Like that. We're going to add some more dark and light. And then we could add some cracks. And another thing I like to do is to take my pencil and we're just going to go, up, 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 up. we're going to do a little drum roll here. I don't want to keep it right, right there in there. So we have some texture into the rocks. Plus, it adds a great sound effect for the video. So, yeah, okay, right there. Okay. I can go through. I can smudge a little bit if I want to. But I don't want to do too much because I love that rocky texture. 
and those dark pencils, remember how the dark pencils bring all that paper texture out into it. So we're going to bring it right into there. Might add a few little cracks, just like I did these accent lines in the tree. I will have some accent lines in the cracks, and that helps to create my rocky look there. Okay, now I still got to finish my hill. Like I said, I didn't want anything specific here, but just like I was doing those little dots right there, if I start doing little streaks like that, I can create a very grass-like texture. So we're going to zoom in a little bit here. Do, 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 do. There we go. And let's try our focus again. I guess we're focused all right. Okay. And I'm going to take this and start doing some Now, I want to protect my rock right here. So I'm actually going to make these dark. I'm going to make them come up so we get that sword blade type grass. But I don't want any rock. I mean, I don't want any grass over the top of my rock here. Down here, however, I do want the grass to come in front of the rock. Start bringing it there. This really is a dark pencil. <laughs> Did I see a pair of scissors over there somewhere? A few blades of grass coming out from behind our rocks. Um. Or an exacto knife. Ah, oh, no, no, exacto. Yeah, something I can cut with. <laughs> um, okay. Anyway, while they're hunting for those things, we're just going to start adding some more blades up in here. And I want to, I want to vary it a little bit. Been doing really dark at this point. I'm going to start coming down here. As I come down, I'm going to go lighter and lighter and lighter. If you open that closet there, the white closet, oh, perfect. Oh, that's even better. Even better than an exacto for this. Okay, I'm going to start coming down here, and I'm just going to get scribbly, only we don't call it scribbly when we are artists. We call it scumbling. This is called scumbling, and it is another tried and true technique that we use quite often. It creates a nice little rough edge. It could be grass. It could be the log. It could actually be bark. I could have used that up here on the tree. And so we're just scumbling across because it has a vertical movement to it. People will equate that in their mind with the grass that we've been putting around the tree and everything else. Now, We're going to create a shield, not a Captain America shield, just a regular old erasing shield. There are shading shields and erasing shields. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to cut a blade of grass right there. And I want a slightly different sized one, so I'm going to cut another one right there, a little bit skinnier. Okay, so I've got two little blades of grass. I'm going to take these blades of grass and I can take either my pencil eraser and just lay that in there. And go over. And this works out best in the darkest areas. Not so great in the, the lightest areas. But if you erase over the top of some dark shading, will help to create the illusion of light blades of grass coming out of there. Okay, see how that works? And you can have them crossing over each other. You have to press down pretty hard when you're doing the erasing because you want that to show up against that dark background. And since this grass has a slight curve to it, 
if I flip it over, then I get the curve going the other direction. So I add some variety to it. Variety is the spice of life. Or so they say. I'm going to add some light blades of grass up against my tree here. to break up if you get a little too much monotony going on in there you can break that up with that you can even go down in here where I have all the scumbling and create Let's flip it over Racing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Go back in, add details into it. And this I'm just using the little HB pencil. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and bring this on down. I'm gonna move the camera over just a little bit. And bring this down here with the scumble technique. This is the close grass. This is kind of the beach area here. And uh, let me zoom out a little bit there so we can see it better. But this is just the close beach to us. And since it's a mountainous scene, probably the grass is growing right up to the beach. So I'm just going to scumble in with my HB pencil. A little bit of grass down here. Starting with the top and working in layers. Don't have too much room to do another layer, but let's go ahead and have those layers come right off the bottom. Now we can add Oh, really close to the finish here. Uh, if you want to, you can add a few little spots just to add a little kind of a pollen look to them. Or if you want to create some details into the grasses, make it look like it's little heads of some wheat-like stalks. You know how the grass gets the little grass seed at the end on the ends of them. And there's our little landscape there. Uh, lots of different techniques here. Lots of different things you can do. You can change things around. Go back in, you might decide you need to add a little shading in a few places. Uh, you can highlight things. You can add some details. Uh, if you have an electric eraser, they're really fun too. You can really pull some details out of here with an electric eraser. I'd get mine out, but I think I'm already running out of time. So we're going to throw a few little details into there. And I think we'll call it, oops, ah, one more sun ray. Got to have one more sun ray. Got to balance, balance it out. Okay, there we go. So, and I hope you enjoyed the show. And uh, get your paper out and just start making crazy stuff. Even if you're just drawing Rocky and Bullwinkle Mountains, throw them in there. So, all right. And those were soft pencils. Next time we'll come back with how to use a hard pencil. So, all right. See you guys all later. <laughs>